Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Boyce just coming to you with some gold goodness out on that core health compound LE. Spotting up here in the top right hand corner, we have Dram, Dr Dream N. Dream? Uh, I, I'm just going to call him Dream On because that would appear to be what his name is supposed to be. It just isn't that. So he's the bright Protoss up in the top right hand corner. And spotting down here in the bottom left hand corner, we have Arcanine as the Blue Zerg. And just really quickly, he said good luck. Uh, FH. So I'm thinking he's saying like good luck full house, you know? Because I mean, I guess if they're in a 1v1, two people is a full house. I mean, it's the most people you can possibly have, so I guess he has something there. It would appear that our Protoss player is going to be going for some level of Forge Fast Expand. Actually, just the Fast Expand in general. I guess it might be a Gateway Fast Expand, um, which is possible on this map if you're kind of ballsy. Uh, now, Protoss, if Zerg goes for like 14 pool, then you're probably just gonna die. Is the gateway expands aren't really that safe at all. Um, I would really expect to see a little brave forge expand because usually gateway expands are you know held for people with really amazing micro and you know the pro level of people or at least the top two percent, which is usually Masters League. Anyway, I should just open that up so that you know it's a bit it's a bit more clear. Uh, Dreamon Dream is moving around his opponent's base. He's going to block this drone for, you know, a couple minerals. Just be a little bit annoying. And I don't think that was really on purpose. That was just a kind of funny timing thing. And he's going to be dropping that forge. So he is going to be fairly safe with this expand. Um, I wonder how he's going to build his wall. Because I could definitely see people building their wall up to connect to our nexus. I'm putting like a cannon here and a cannon up here. At the same time, he can build this wall straight across. The straight across wall will, of course, need more buildings, which is more minerals, which is just more. Uh, however, based on his positioning of the pylon, it looks like he wants to build it like that and just have his pylon as part of the wall, which isn't, you know, the safest thing, but it's something. It's something you can do. It looks like he is going to go for that Nexus suit before any sort of, you know, cannon or anything safe. He's being uh, he's feeling a bit dangerous, uh, and it looks like the hashery actually gets down before the nexus does, which isn't exactly what you want, but it's kind of unavoidable, especially if your opponent doesn't go for any sort of zerglings or any queen as soon as that uh, spawning pool finishes. Uh, now, of course, I would have preferred to see Arcanine go for like a queen, just because yeah, queens are pretty nice. They're they're fairly useful units. Uh, they really boost up that. They really boost up that larva count, which is pretty important, especially if you go for the spawning pool first, because usually the hatchery first is completely based on the idea that you have, you know, that extra time before your opponent has a, a uh, base up just to get it saturated and get, you know, well ahead on the economic front, which of course he's not going to have the uh, favor of doing. But yeah, it doesn't really matter at this level of play. Uh, it's not going to have any sort of lasting or even really major effect on the gameplay from here on out. And it looks like Dreamon is going for a very, very interesting wall. Um, it's I, He's probably just going to put like a cyber, cybernetics core, but really this wall is kind of like an odd shape. It's like a semicircle almost. It's actually less of a semicircle and more of like an eighth circle of a circle that's like that big. You know? Yeah, you guys understand. Here, you all bright people. And I'm set myself busy. Oh, there we go. Boom. Getting it done. Uh, the Cybernetics Core has is, has started. Excuse me. The probe is gonna block off the uh, gonna block off the entrance to his base temporarily. The third base is coming down for Arcanine, so going for a fairly fairly strong economic play. Um, and it would appear that Arcanine just just building up them drones, getting that drone count. Uh, this queen's actually moving down to the natural. Didn't, I don't think it larvaed the, the main base, but that's primarily because he already had a second queen on the way, so he just moved that one down to the natural to get extra larva. And now that queen's kind of, he doesn't, she doesn't know where to go. She's just, she's chilling. She's gonna be dropping down like a uh, maybe creep tumor, potential. No, she's just, she's just chilling. She's just gonna hang out over there. Uh, Dream On is of course doing a very nice job of keeping his Corona Boost low, making sure to always have them probes cranking. 
Uh, he also has another two gateways down, which will bring him up to three gateways. Uh, no other noticeable tech coming out for a Protoss player yet. He does have a Forge, but he's not researching anything on it yet. And actually, I do prefer people to research stuff, especially against Zerg, because that plus one attack is just such a crucial upgrade. It's really nice against every type of unit. However, against Zerglings, it's just... It's ridiculous how much it matters. Like, absolutely ridiculous how much it matters. Because it takes down a three-shot zealot kill to a two-shot zealot kill. Very, very important. The queen is kind of just chilling. She's building them creep tumors. Another queen has spawned, and they are going to be injecting larva. You know, just not a whole lot of interesting stuff happening yet. The probe is going to try to get some information, but he's going to be shut down quite effectively by these four probes and their queen buddy. They're probably just going to high-five around a little bit, have a bit of a celebration. And Dream On is saying it's a bit hard to play with all the lag. I understand that, Dream On. Playing with lag kind of blows. It's, it's not a situation that you want to be in. It would appear that he is going up to seven gateways. So that's that's quite a few gateways. He's also getting quite a bunch of sentries. Uh, yeah, that's five sentries for one zealot. Uh, and it looks like he's going to be going for a push with that five sentry one zealot uh, force. And this is not going to be a well placed push. Uh, if you look, we have the defense already strengthening from Arcanine. He's getting three spines at his natural, two or two spines at his natural, three spines at his third speed is gonna be just about finished by the time this attack hits you know it might be like 10 seconds after this attack hits but it's gonna be pretty freaking close the roaches are also coming up and that's six roaches six roaches can basically club an attack force like this on their own uh, now that of course these zerglings are surrounding the sentries and actually doing quite a lot of damage to the sentries before they're forced off you know he managed to pick off one sentry got another sentry down into the red uh, it looks like a zealot is taking a little bit of damage, not too much hull damage, so it's really not that bad. Dreamon really, you know, the Sartosis pylon got his backup caseless pylon, it's all good. And actually, this attack is a bit scarier than I originally thought. But there's 13 roaches on the way, so not really. It's still not that scary. It is a fairly large Protoss ball, however, this is going to be a crap ton of roaches, and this is already a, quite a formidable wall of spine crawlers. So I do not foresee Arcanine being in any lasting sort of danger from this attack, unless of course he decides to move his slow roaches around the completely wrong way, in which case he might lose hatchery. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, those zealots are going to be forced off a little bit. Are they going to get ballsy? Are they going to get ballsy? Yeah, they're going to get a little ballsy. Uh, now, of course, the beautiful force fields actually are going to prevent a lot of the damage that these roaches would do. However, there's just too many roaches, and it really doesn't even matter. Um, the, the, the second and the third and the fourth queen are coming in from behind, and with these four, and with these three queens, uh, especially with transfuges, I don't. I mean, it's going to be kind of a shoestringy defense for Arcanine. However, I think he'll be able to hold it off quite effectively. And Dreamon is honestly, he is in a, uh, he's in kind of an awkward position at this point. Arcanine, you need your roaches down here. Arcanine, oh god, fuse. Beautiful fuses, actually. Wow, really beautiful infuses. The queen with the energy does go down. This queen, uh, goes down too. Uh, he actually is targeting the queen with the energy, which is something that you... Arcanine! Arcanine. All he has left is stalkers. You have so many roaches. Oh god, such a blunder. Oh man. That is, that is saddening. That is saddening and depressing. And there, Arcanine goes down little tiny hatchling surrounding and killing a zealot who just kind of got abandoned by his other Protoss allies. And Arcanine is going to be moving out. He's going to snipe off a couple of pylons. And these pylons might be a little bit crucial because these will completely supply block Dream On. And Dream On supply blocks will not be able to reinforce nearly as quickly. And he's actually not going to go for the uh, pylon that would really supply block his opponent. He's just going to chill out, let that one survive. Go and snipe off the Protoss force. Now, of course, the Protoss force is slightly larger than Arcanine thinks. However, it's not nearly big enough for these roaches to actually be afraid. So it looks like the attack is finally going to be uh, neutralized by Arcanine. He's going to fight it off. His roaches, which should have been in the fight, are still over here. They're still chilling. There's still a little bit of roaches over there. 
and Arcanine should probably drop down his third again and even really expand for a fourth because Dream On is, you know, he's he has a very weak economy. Uh, Arcanine is now like uneven with his opponent's economy and he just lost the base. Uh, so that's actually a pretty reasonable spot for our Zerg player. However, the issue is is that Dream On is now going for that tech lead. He's getting that Stargate up, he's getting that robotics facility up. It's just, uh, if he lets this go on, our Zerg player is going to be in a world of hurt. Because Immortals and Void Rays pretty good against Roaches. Mainly because Roaches can't hit Void Rays and Immortals do like 9,000 damage to them. It might actually be slightly over 9,000, like maybe 9,005. I haven't really looked at the most recent patch changes. You know, uh, Dream On is building up a small but Protoss force at the front of his base. But this force is going to be trivial when it's compared with the force he's going to have three minutes from now. A, you know, a Protoss player will build up units, and as soon as he techs, he will just complete. His army will literally double in strength because of the units he techs to. Like, for example, this Void Rate on its own adds so much worth to this army, because this Void Rate could, might as well just be a Dark Templar when your opponent doesn't have vision. It just it can't be hit. And it's extremely annoying. And Arcanine just let himself get supply blocked. Uh, of course, not a good situation. He's also not actually going for any sort of anti air defense, which is kind of a. Uh, it's, it's not the best play he could be doing currently, you know? He should probably go for some sort of anti air, maybe a Spire, maybe Hydra's. Really, anything would be better than nothing. Yeah, and Dream On is, you know, he's getting pushed back into his base. These roaches are going to break through, however, honestly, the most damage they're going to do is just killing off that Stark Army. Maybe sniping off a couple of cannons, maybe getting a couple of pylons, uh, however, that really depends on how fast this Protoss Army can react. They did just finish speed, so some of them at least should be able to escape, which is a pretty major thing. Uh, you know, five roaches escaping to live another day, not super awesome, you know? <laughs> Bringing an entire army of urges in and escaping with five could be considered a loss. However, in StarCraft terms, it's a victory because most Zergs just A move it and then go back to their base and macro again. That's just, that's how Zergs play uh, a lot in these lower leagues. They don't really even think about bringing any of their men back. The hatchery for Arcanine has finally finished. However, it looks like he wants to go for a base trade, and base trades are not what I would suggest when your opponent has units you can't hit. Because, honestly, you can't win a base trade, because he'll just send those Void Rays back as soon as he realizes he doesn't need them on the front. Uh, especially now that, oh, uh, the Sentry is useless. Anyway, it looks like the base trade is going to be happening here. Uh, Arcanine really needs to get a lot more just stationary defenses at his natural if he actually wants to go for anything on the warpath like he's going for right now. And honestly, his roaches are essentially all in. A uh, Void Ray has just popped, and I think Dream On should really consider bringing his Void Rays back from the main force back to his base, because three Void Rays can actually clean up an army of roaches deceptively quickly. Like, we'll watch this one Void Ray just absolutely decimate through someone. Just like, watch this roach die. Just watch it. Watch this roach die, alright? And dead. And he's moving on to the next one. And the next one is... Okay, the next one kind of ran away finally. And uh, the force field is not nearly as useful as it had to be. Uh, however, honestly, Dream On is in a pretty strong position right now. Uh, it looks like plenty of spine crawlers are going up for Arcanine, but the big question is, is, is it going to be enough? It looks like it's going to be enough to stall the Protoss attack, and actually Arcanine might have just done way more damage than I thought he was going to do. Man, Dreamon really should have just pushed until the main, into the uh, natural, especially when he had the chance, because Arcanine has four units back here, with six reinforcing Hydralis. He's going to have ten units versus a Protoss army. Right, honestly, if, if you're stuck in a situation like that, the suggestion I can give you is send your Void Rays back, and then push into your opponent's base and just fucking kill him. Because honestly, you have the third base, you can maintain your level of tech reasonably enough. Uh, the Void Rays are very good at putting a timer on Roaches. Roaches will not survive for a whole ton of time after you have three Void Rays set on a pack of Roaches. Because honestly, the, the Roaches will run around, and it'll kind of be like a time trial in a game that's just like a destruction game, where he's just going to be running around trying to deal as much damage as he possibly can, but in the end, it's just it's not going to be enough damage, usually. 
Uh, in this case, in this scenario, it was quite a bit of damage. However, I still, I will stick to the idea that with more void rays back at base, it would have been, it would have been marginalized tenfold. It would have done so much less, because uh, those roaches might have run away in fear. Uh, they actually probably quite possibly would have run away in fear. And Arcanine now has a pretty solid army, especially versus this composition from the Protoss player. Because the thing that counters Hydralisks, and the reason people don't make Hydralisks against Protoss, is Colossi. Because Hydras are very, very slow, and Colossi do a lot of damage to them. Just an absolute crap ton of damage to them. Um, so really, without having Colossi... These Hydralisks are actually going to do reasonably well against the Protoss Force. I mean, just wash and tear through the flank of Stalkers, uh, go right for the Immortals, just absolutely just ripping through stuff. Uh, and we see our Protoss player not really having an army in reserve. Actually, he just doesn't have an army in reserve at all. He also doesn't have any resources. So Arcanine might have just won this game. Not to say it too fast, but it's not it's not looking good for Dream On. It's it's really not. And Arcanine's Force again, not the largest, however, I think it's gonna be big enough to really finish off this game, because honestly, Hydralisks have really high DPS. Uh, Dream On does not have nearly the tank. Oh Dream On, this I feel you buddy. I can understand the depression of just getting absolutely crushed. However, honestly, you know, no, no, wrong, that is almost completely incorrect. Uh, Void Rays would have literally won you the game in the mid-game. Sending all of your units back that counter Roaches would have won you the game in the mid-game. Uh, yeah, Arcanine basically said it right there. Dream On did almost have him. And now it would appear that we're entering the game where they're just going to casually talk? Maybe? I didn't really watch the end of this game because I was just going to cold commentate it. So I'm kind of afraid to speed up through the rest of this casual talking. Because I'm pretty sure there's still like 3 minutes left. Actually, I can check that because I have a super sneaky overlay. Yeah, I don't know. This is going to be... I, I think the Protoss player is literally just going to sit here and waste time for Arcanine. Then don't play it, Dream On. Don't play it. I don't... Dream On is kind of just raging hard. And, uh, yeah, it would it would certainly appear that he's just going to, uh, wait for his every player to completely finish him off. So I'm just going to be speeding it right along, and there we go, replay completed. So, anyway guys, if you want your replays commentated, and let's be honest, you know you do, send them on in to boisterousSC2 at gmail.com. Also, in like an hour and a half after I put this game up, me and Kudonk will be doing a live commentary of the SCL. Uh, it's going to be one of the playoff matches from this week. I do believe it's Opportunity versus SSV B Team. Uh, it's going to be a best of seven team league, all kill format. It's going to be so awesome. You should definitely check it out over at twitch.tv slash boisterous 2 and also if you want to you can just follow twitch.tv slash boisterous 2 for all of your SCL action anytime you want to watch any of the uh, tournaments sponsored by SC2 clans or any of the tournaments that me and Kadunk will most likely start putting on this summer uh, we have we have some pretty awesome plans and I think I think most of you will enjoy it it should be plenty of fun so anyway guys this is Boisterous, signing out.